Who do you trust the most of those three teams? Well, I, I, I was thinking about this. And the reason I chose this team is because I'm, uh, I'm looking at the coach. I'm looking at Eric Musselman over at Arkansas. And I think about this, the team last year lost to Hofstra, started out 0-3 in the SEC, just didn't look like it was going to be something. Then they go on to win nine straight, should have been 10 straight. Uh, they were playing Alabama and they just uh, couldn't make a shot. J.D. notes they got in foul trouble. I love this group of freshmen coming in. This group, this the, the five-star freshmen looking at uh, Nick Smith, Anthony Black, and Jordan Walsh. And I think Jordan Walsh, is, he's not getting spoken about as much. He's a dog. I mean, the oh. kid, he's six foot seven dog. with a seven foot three wingspan. The way that he defend, like, you think you got space and you don't. He's one of those kind of guys that and, he has And Musk loves work. those dudes that, like, yeah. long and athletic. You could plug in at the four and they just want to go out there and defend and rebound and just yeah. be athletic. And that's what he wants. That's how he plays, too. Like, he, he understands who he is, which makes him so dangerous. He's, he's gosh, I, I love just the way that he uh, he gets to the rim, really long steps. But Nick Smith, um, as, as we know, he's there's not a bad word people are saying about him. I guess the only question is how, how well is he going to finish at the rim, uh, adjusting to SEC play with larger bigs protecting the rim. But he's got it on all three levels. I like that he, you know, looking at J.D. Note that they had last year, a little ball heavy, uh, you know, needed to have the ball in his hands a lot. Nick Smith can be off the ball. Um, to get his shots to help this team. The question mark, though, I guess you would say looking at this Arkansas team, um, because a lot of the games that they won last year didn't come down to offense. You know, uh, it came down to their D. They're just straight up toughness. Sometimes they were not the better, the more talented team. But you could see, like when I, I was there when Florida played Arkansas, at, at, in, or Arkansas played Florida in Arkansas in uh, Florida last year, uh, Arkansas just showed a level of toughness that, hey, it doesn't matter that we're not making shots we're going to get the rebound and we're going to score every time. And that's what this tough Arkansas team is going to do. And it re- it's a direct reflection of the coach that uh, coach Mo- Eric Musselman is. He's done a fantastic job to see him doing it with 11 new players though. That's going to be something. And um, let's not forget about Devo Davis uh, mm-hmm. as well into this lineup. I think he's going to make another jump and be a solid player contributor. He knows the system really well and he's going to bring some leadership. So I, I absolutely trust them the most out of those three. Yeah, so my my take on Arkansas, Tio, tell me what you think about this. I think that we are going to see them get off to a slow start. We've seen it uh, last couple of seasons with must teams when he adds all of these new transfers coming in, right? It takes them a little while to gel. There are some bumps in the road in December, maybe even early January, and then they figure it out. He gets that rotation cut down to like six or seven guys, and they go on these runs, and they just start winning and winning and winning. I think it was with uh, – who was the transfer from um, – from Indiana they had Justin Smith. They moved Justin Smith to the five uh, in 2020, 21. And that's when they made their run. They moved Devo Davis to sixth man last season. That's when they made their run. So how, how concerned are you when you consider that they have, is that a take or is that just what happened? No, That's what happened. So here's, here's my question. Okay. How concerned are you about the fact that you, that we've seen teams that are freshmen loaded, Take take some lumps early on in the season. I think oh, it's we're gonna, gonna see happen with Duke this season. So, like, how how concerned are you about that? N- not much. Uh, I mean, they're gonna they just got thumped by Texas by what thirty five. Like, it, it's gonna it's a process. And not only that, we were talking about who we should trust over the course of the year. I like this Arkansas team a lot. I like all those freshmen. I like Nick Smith. I think Jordan Walsh is awesome. Pat, you would love. Did you did you have a chance to see him in person? I have not. He, he is your he kind of guy. Great. Yeah. I mean, the ultimate talker, the ultimate competitor. He's calling everybody out. Well, he's looking at a coach. He's looking at him directly in the eye. Like, this <laughs> dude is bringing heat the entire time, even in timeouts. Like, he's your kind of guy. They have talent everywhere. Anthony Black doesn't get enough credit either. I haven't seen a whole no, lot of doesn't. him. I saw him dunk over somebody, on top of somebody. Like, they have talent. It is going to take a second. And we didn't even mention uh, Trayvon Brazil. Oh, I was about right. to bring him up. Yeah. By the way, I'm going to throw this out there. I thought he could be Missouri's most talented player. I, I predicted that just after watching some grainy high school footage. I don't even think he played AAU ball, but it was like, man, this kid has tools. Now he's starting to put them together. And Musselman loves that guy. They have a lot of pieces. Am I worried about the early season and early conference? Yes, I am. But I think by time tournament time comes around and SEC play, SEC tournament time comes around, they're going to be somebody to be reckoned with. Again, what is it, two elite eights in a row? 
Arkansas yep. could make the Final Four because not only is he going to figure it out as the season goes on, but that talent is bigger, that talent is better, and by the time March happens, that talent's going to be ready, and they're going to be a lot to deal with uh, throughout the season. Do I pick them to be above, say, in Alabama for the regular season? I would probably say no because I think Alabama will be have the ability to be a little bit more consistent, especially during the early portions of conference play in early January, right? It might take a little time to get those guys going. So. Last year was well, not. Well, let's year. let's let's talk about Alabama because that's a perfect segue. Um, Patrick, you kind of brought this up a little bit. I can't remember where it was either the pre-show or we were texting about it or something. Yeah. Um, so Brandon Miller is a guy I'm all in on as a really, really good player. My concern, and I think it's something that you mentioned, is that he's kind of like a mid-range guy, right? Whereas when you look at the best team that Nate Oates had when he was at Alabama, it was when Herb Jones who was, I mean, he wasn't really a shooter, but he was a guy that can make an open shot, but he was a point guard that was playing defense as a power forward in the SEC Defensive Player of the Year. So my question to you is this. Three guards, Brandon Miller with Charles Betty like, is that going to work? How do you see this all coming together for Nate Oates? Oh, man. Well, last year, let's just hope that was a blur of the, as I said, T.O., it was nauseating. Covering, you, you didn't know who you were going to get, and there was a hope that, the Al- Alabama finally figured out coming into the tournament, but obviously they got knocked out in the first round. Um, if Javon Quinterly is, you know, he had a late ACL tear at the end of the season last year. I really like his game, um, but his game is is uh, keyed in on him getting to the basket, um, keyed in on him uh, just playing fast. So I, I he dribbles too damn degree. much, Pat. He does dribble a lot. He does dribble the ball a lot, uh, but he he doesn't shoot it as much as Jaden Shackelford did. Goodness gracious. Uh, I love Brandon Miller. I saw him. I think he's an NBA player right now um, with his ability to create space and get to his shot and his craftiness. I was like, I was blown away with how easy the game seemed to come to him. I just wonder, you know, with this offensive style that uh, NATO has, if his style of play is a little too slow, uh, a little, you know, the ball's not moving. If it gets to Brandon Miller saying, will he be able to show off what he can do? He's not super consistent from three, but a guy that can shoot the ball as, as well as from the two-point line, why can't he do it from the three-point line? Is this the formula? It's a team that plays so fast. If they can take care of the ball, and I really like Mark Sears uh, with this Alabama team coming from the MAC from Ohio. I agree. Uh, I really like his game. I watched some, some of his highlights. Uh, he he can shoot it, man. That's the big thing. Like that, that's, that's the, the big, big thing, thing with him. That's the big thing with the Alabama offense. You know, th- their best teams have been able to shoot the ball because they're shoot their volume shooting team. They're going to they're going to put up 43s. So they, are they going to be able to knock down 43s or not, not knock down 43s, but shoot a good percentage and take care of the ball? Turnovers killed this Alabama team um, last year. So um, I'm really thinking Charles Bediaco is going to make a jump. Um, he he's the finisher around the basket, so he doesn't need the ball in his hands in the way that a lot of big bigs do uh, nowadays, the year of the big, as you uh, stated in the almanac. But um, I do like this Mamba team. There's just a lot of question marks. As you'll see, uh, each coach is going to need some time to f- figure out what works best with them. I just hope, you know, those midseason adjustments are going to be vital versus trying to stick guys into your system uh, that aren't built for it to make it work to win games. Dio. Yeah. Yeah, I, there's a lot of pieces there. The thing with Alabama and, and what Nate Oates does so well is finds ways to get guys in the paint off the dribble and with speed. And if you look back to what Herb Jones was doing, the reason they let him run the point is because he was attacking a four man because everybody figured, well, I got to match up with who's there. So what does that do? That takes the ball out of Quinterly's hands, make him attack closeouts. It gives him a little bit more space to operate. I like this team a lot – for that reason, because I think they're going to find ways to get into the paint. And I like Mark Sears alongside Jaden Bradley. Jaden Bradley can play. and But he gives you that senior veteran presence, even though he's taking a step up. I feel like Nate's always played two, small, two smaller guards. And then look at how this talented roster is going to be able to come together. They've well, got other he, pieces. He, the, their, the best year that they had, part of the reason they won is because they were so good defensively. They, I was Jay, about to say, yeah. that was going to be yeah. my next thing. Like, yeah. last year, Alabama's team finished 92nd overall in defense. Like, that's not good enough. Because what if you're playing with that many possessions, you're going to have to stop some of them, too. Right. Yeah. So that, that makes it really difficult. I think this lineup – are, is going to be able to to swing some of those things. I'm telling you, Brandon Miller, you guys are right. He was more of a mid-range guy. 
Uh, I watched him play alongside Nick Smith at Peach Jam. His shot's not broken. I, I feel like it's going to be able to step out. And he's going to be able to hit some, maybe in the mid thirties. But I think that would be good enough for this team if he it's can. Got, create it's some the threat, things. man. Right? It's the threat. It's, it's the, the it's the fact that they make people come out to guard you. And I will say this about Brandon Miller, and then we're going to move on to Auburn. Uh, what Nate Oates told me on the record um, is, for the Almanac, he said. When your best player isn't begging for shots, begging for minutes, or begging for anything, this is what happens, referring to Herb Jones. And he said that Alabama, or I'm sorry, that Brandon Miller is all in on Alabama the same way that Herb Jones was all in well, on Alabama. Well, he only cares about winning, which is a good thing. All right. I was about to say about the Auburn. same thing about Sheboy, but but I got I got cut off because we had to get to his thing. Like, yeah, when well, your I mean, best gotta, player is your hardest this player. This isn't a Kentucky podcast. We got to talk about the whole SEC, T.O. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, I want to take we, we got more 30 seconds to before to. we get to Goodman's interview, his oh, 37th yeah. interview of Oscar Sheboy. I'm glad we get that <laughs> content in. Sorry, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But when your best player is your hardest player, like your your hardest playing player, that's a good. That's good. Yes, that's good news. It, it sets a tone. All right. Sorry. Speaking Dustin. of your best player being your hardest playing player, can we talk a little bit about Katie Johnson? Like, how much do you love this dude at Auburn? And can you? Here's here's a bigger question. Can you win at the level that Auburn wants to be able to win if your backcourt is Wendell Green and Katie Johnson? To I know you love him. What, what did you call him? Nightmare fuel. Katie Johnson runs on nightmare fuel. That's wow. what he runs on. I love this guy. Hey, man, he he picks up like full that. court. He's talking to everybody. He's cussing out Bruce. And then, like, I was at I was at Battle for Atlantis last year. He's looking over. He's cussing me out. I'm sitting on the sideline. I didn't even know what I was doing, but he was so <laughs> ingrained in the game and bringing the intensity and the chaos. I love it. Here's the thing. This is – where last year's Walker Kessler, Jabari Smith combination was arguably the best front court in the country. This is a watered down version this year. Jani Broom's a very good college player. Uh, he's a very good college player. He's not a Walker Kessler type defensive player. Uh, Johan Treor is a very, he's going to be a very good freshman. He's not a Jabari Smith level player. So you're going to have these same pieces. You're still going to have the same offense, but your front court's not going to be as good. And not to say they're not good. They're going to be good, Auburn fans. So take it easy before you go crazy. I just don't think that they're going to be at that same level. And I think Jabari Smith bailed them out of a lot. Walker Kessler bailed them out defensively like crazy because KD and Wendell, they were out there gambling for steals. So what happens, they get passed, and then they still got to run into Walker. Is Trey mm -hmm. going to be that kind of defensive presence? Is Janai Broom going to be that defensive presence? That worries me a little they bit. Think, they think Broom is going to be. That's what they that's what they're kind of banking on. And I don't know if he necessarily will be because that's a little bit of a, a step the up. defensive a, player of the year. Well, no, not no one's going to be as good as Walker Kessler. Right. Like That's just you can't compare anyone defensively to him because he was a freak. He had like 80 blocks in SEC. Yeah, play. he blocked was, everything. Like he's ridiculous. just not going to be like but they think, they think that he will be a player. Yeah, they Sorry. think that he's going to be a good enough rim protector where you can kind of do the same thing. Like, you're never going to be at the same level, but you can kind of do some of the same stuff. I'm going to give you guys a name, though. Chance Westry. That dude, 6'6", six, six, can play make okay. on the ball, is a shooter. Like They're really excited about him. He's banged up. I, I had it written down. I don't remember what it is. Is it an ankle? A foot? I think it's a foot. Um, but he, like, he missed some time in the preseason. So if he can get back healthy, he's going to be the guy, Patrick, that I think is an X-Factor. Speaking of well, X-Factors. Let me, let me go give ahead. you a name. Alan Hit Flanagan. Me. I'm ready. I was about to go Alan Flanagan. Like, is he going to come back? Go ahead, Pat. Get him. Well, get him, well, Pat. Get him. I want I want uh, uh, Auburn fans to understand. Yes, Alan Flanagan wasn't the same as he was making that huge jump from three points a game his freshman year to sixteen his sophomore year. He tore his Achilles. That is a mm -hmm. sometimes a career ender. So the fact that he was out there, he, he a great teammate, great guy. I got a chance to know him a little bit. Uh, know he's had some issues uh, within it, personal issues. I would say. Uh, coming into the season that he may not be playing as much, or I don't know what the case would be. But Alan Flanagan, when he was good, when he was, oh my goodness, he was he was unconscious. Like uh, borderline pro, down. like borderline early second pro. round pick. Good. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it takes a year of playing to get back from an Achilles. Like I played yeah. with a guy at Clemson, his name was James Mays, and he was right on the cusp of getting call-ups. And he tore his Achilles. And that following year, like he wasn't very good. And then he ended up getting back to form and then having a great 10-year career in Asia. Like wow. it just sometimes like that takes a while that Achilles injury. Like it takes a year to kind of get back on track a little bit. Yeah. They need him because if they, he comes back and chance Westry is what they expect him to be. All of a sudden you can go from a team that plays two guards that are six foot and under to being a team that has 
two guys up front that are 6'10 and long and two wings that can be 6'6 and athletic. Yeah. So that's a that's a difference maker. All right.